Dakota L1 laser. Got it sitting right here. Uh, I did previously did an assembly video on this, and this laser was provided to me to test and demonstrate. But I can't leave things alone. I got to make some modifications. One of the first things I'm going to make is a custom baseboard with a layout grid and some custom mounts and risers. Explain it coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And what I'm going to be doing here again is I'm going to be making a custom baseboard for this. Because I like to have all my lasers on baseboards. I've designed some custom mounts. And with these mounts, I'll be able to put risers on them. So, for example, this is a 25 millimeter riser. It will set on top of the leg like this. And if I want to go with a 50 millimeter, there's a 50. And I'm going to work on some more possibly, but for right now I can just stack all these up, make them anything I want in case I want to use a rotary on this. I do intend to keep this laser and use it, so I'm going to be making some other modifications to it as well. One of them being I'm going to add the air assist kit that they, of course, they supplied that, but it's going to require some modifications to the uh, laser head and I'll that'll be a separate video because that's going to be somewhat involved. What I'll show you here is I'm mounting this onto a piece of half inch MDF. And I'll be using these mounting feet right here. As you can see, there's a hole in there. The leg fits in this hole perfectly. And if I need to take this laser off to go do something else with it, for example, if I wanted to put it on a door, to engrave something on a door, I could do that. And when I bring it back and set it back down, it'll be in exactly the same spot, which means my layout grid will always be exactly perfect. So where am I getting the layout grid? Of course, we're not to that point yet, but this basically has a 400 millimeter square working area. So does the Ortura Laser Master 2, and I have one of those up in the laser room in the loft. And someone has already made a layout grid for that, and I've used that on quite a few different lasers. Uh, I'll put a link in the description on where to download that from Thingiverse. You can download the G-code. You can either run it from Laser Gerbil or you can run it from Lightburn. But what I got to do first here is sand this. I always sand this to about 220 before I do all my mounting and engraving on it. So as you saw there, I put a round over around this on both sides. MDF is great, but it's very, very easy to chip it if when it has that sharp edge. So that's why I did the round over. You can also use plywood. You could use three quarter. Um, I'm just using half here because it was sitting in the corner and I had it. So what I'm going to do next here is put little feet on the four corners of the bottom. And the reason I do this is twofold. One is if I have this setting on my actual saw table, this is extremely slick. It's waxed and polished and everything and things just slide right across it. That's what you want on a saw table. But if you're trying to work with a laser or something, you don't want it scooting all over the place. So the little rubber feet will help to grip that. Normally I do have a sheet of cardboard on here and I have it setting on that. The second reason I like to have the little rubber feet on is I've got some place to grab when I want to pick the whole thing up and I'm not trying to slide over and get under a corner and so I've gone to putting feet on these. These are nothing more than just cutting board feet. I'm putting them an inch in each direction on the four corners with uh, number six by half screws. Yeah, 
Okay, I've got my little base pieces. That's one of them right here. I've got them set on all four corners. I've got this squared up. The size of this piece of wood here, or MDF, is 24 by 26. It's 24 this way, 26 this way. 24 by 24 probably would have worked, but this was already that size and I didn't feel like cutting it again. So I've got a little bit of area in the front here, but that, that's fine. It kind of kind of protect the cables when they're plugged in. I do have this set with the blocks flush to the back of the board, and I have everything squared up. You know, all I'll, I'll do is make a little trace around these, and then I will screw my blocks down. Okay, what I'm going to be using here is laser gerbil for this. Engrave this in, in here, so I need to turn my laser on. And I need to connect. And I did. And I'll take it home. I need to load my file. Of course, I'm using the uh, Laser Master 2 Pro Grid. And there it is. So, what I want to do first here, what I want to do first here is take this home. Hit the home button here. And make sure after all this fooling around that it actually came home where it's supposed to. Okay, we're good there. Now, the next thing I want to do is frame this to make sure that after all my fooling around I didn't move a limit switch or something. And this does take a little while to make that travel around there. And you can follow that little blue cursor there in Laser Gerbil. You can see as it goes across the top of that grid, you can see where the laser position is. Okay, we're good to go. So I just need to hit start. I may have missed getting something on the camera here on the screen recording when I was starting this up. Well, when I said to get up here to file, there's file, and of course this is grayed out now because it's running, you would click on send a machine. Now, if for some reason you would need to stop this and still be able to resume it, if you click on the little hand there with the stop sign, that'll hold it, and then this will become green, and you can click on that to restart your project. And here again in, in Laser Gerbil, you can follow that cursor as it makes its passes. It says projected time down here is an hour and three minutes or so, and that's, that's about right. There's our layout grid mounted on a board. Grid come out perfect. That really helps when you're laying out projects. And having this mounted to a board like this where when I take this off and put it back on, it's always in the same place. That layout grid is a great thing, especially since I, since I work from center and work from absolute coordinates, having that center point is a big plus. So the other question is, okay, well, how do these risers work? Well. I'm going to raise this 25 millimeter. The base right here is 26 millimeters tall, but so is the leg. So the, this does not raise the laser. It just keeps it in place. But to, in order to raise the laser, I'm going to pick this up and set it off offset here a little bit. I'll take my blocks, so just like big Legos. Now I can take my laser 
to set it right back in the same place. Now we are 25 millimeters higher and if I put a honeycomb board under here, which I will do here in the near future, this helps with uh, not having to try to take the laser head down too far, or up too far or up past where it can actually go. And I also have 50 millimeter risers, which I'll be using when I put the rotary on here. So if you have one of these lasers and you're interested in the mounting fee and or the risers in either 25 millimeter or 50 millimeter, and you have a 3D printer, if you send me an email, I will send you the STL files and you can print your own. If you do not have a 3D printer and you would like to get the feet and or the risers in either 25 and or 50 millimeter, send me an email along with what state you're in and I will send you a quote because I would be happy to sell you a set and I'm not out to make tons of money on them. I like to help fellow laser users. Again, there'll be a link in the description on where to get this layout grid file. There'll be a link in the description on where to get one of these Dakota lasers. Because I will be using this one to replace a two trees that I am going to completely take out of service because it keeps falling apart. That's a whole other story. This one here seems to be very well built. I like the architecture of it. So I will be using that to replace that two trees. So if you get anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.